perspective? I did because I got the call from Angela. Okay, so you did get the call. So what was going on? Because I, I want to help you clear things up, honey, because that's why uh, we have- Right, because like, you know, it's something to be said once and it's turning into something totally different. <laughs> I, I know, like, honey. Oh, she moved there. She moved there to be on, um, da, 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 da. she been praying on such and such. She want to be being a friend. I'm like, don't do me, honey. I've been here since 2012 and I was doing some big things, you know what I'm saying, before I knew anybody. So yeah. Let us clear that up. <laughs> okay. So no, we're going to clear a lot of things up because I would like to receive all of the information <laughs> and the truth from you. So we contacted you around that time we were shooting Bell Collective. Um, so what happened to where um, the conversations did not lead to you being on Bell Collective? Do you remember? So um, I was so pregnant and I was on bed rest around that time really low energy and um I got a DM and it, I think it was from Angela's assistant and then she was like such as you know somebody wants to speak with you I had no idea what it was for but then along the call I kind of you know knew what it was for because I was being asked questions about Bell Collective and then I ended up saying I don't live in Mississippi though and she was like where do you live and I was like I live in Huntsville and Angela I think I remember Angela saying like what happened when you live in Huntsville and I was like I don't know does anybody else feel yeah, so I, I had no idea. And then I actually asked me, did I know anybody from the cast already? Or was I familiar with anybody on the show? Did I watch the show? I said yes. And then she asked me, when she asked me, did I know anybody? I said, I didn't know anyone, but it was just so like, I don't know, divine, call it what you want. But we were, my team was already like talking with Mel's team about an ambassadorship. And I was like, well, I don't know her, but I know my team is working with her for the mastership and Angela was like, well, maybe we'll meet you that way. Okay. So did you, when you and Mel started to um, form this friendship, right? Um, how did Love and Marriage Huntsville come about? Did you mention it to her that you had um, a desire to be on the show? Did she mention it to you to be on the show? How did that all work out? I would be lying if I said I knew the exact particulars because like the initial engagement I wasn't privy to, um, you know, like any other big company, you sit around, you get calls, I have a director of pub, uh, public relations, have a marketing team, and everybody was just throwing out ideas about ambassadors that we could work with and what those deliverables would look like while working with, you know, whatever ambassador. I think the deliverables were, um, a part of it was like a product placement, cameo situation where I would make my way onto the show for like one episode while doing a photo shoot and saying, hey, this is the um, CEO of the Candy's Beauty brand because my team let me know that a part of Mel's story at that time and a part of her life was she was rebuilding from a divorce. So it would look really well to have like an ambassadorship with another big company in Huntsville and that would lead to X, Y, and Z deliverables. So it wasn't a matter of being on the show. I don't think Mel... I even had a conversation about just being on the show until like that first um, scene at my warehouse. You know, Mel was like, if I had known you wanted to be on the show, she was like, you know, like we could have been on the show. Like she did say that. And I was like, no, for me, everything is about my brand. Like I care about Kim's beauty. I was like, you know, but being on here is a really good experience. And I like it. I was like, so yeah, you know, more me, more Kim is more um, <laughs> love and marriage. I feel and like this kind of what we were, but it was always, supposed to be pitched as far as like um the product placement gotcha so just to so recap. it was never a befriending situation it was never some underlying thing like somebody fake me my friend etc to be on the show it was never that okay so just to recap i got a question for you about that so to recap um obviously you and mel formed a business partnership based on um, melody being an ambassador for your business and one of the one of the um, credentials, right, in order for that to happen was a possible appearance on Love and Marriage Huntsville for the exposure. And that's how you were able to um, form that conversation about being on Love and Marriage Huntsville because it was going to be a business. It was a part of the business acumen in order for this partnership to work. So, th so that's right, right? Um. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. After that, you are on the show, 
we fall in love. Yeah, with like you. it just happened way faster because I'm like, you know, one thing that was like Kevin Beauty ran photo shoot. Hi, this is CEO turned into like full on male's friend TV show. You know what I'm saying? I was like, okay, I'm riding with it. Because once I got into like filming, I was like, I do uh, enjoy the experience. I wouldn't have thought I had would have. Because another thing too, for me, it's important to know like that was kind of like never my whole intention. Courtney is not like, it's still like pulling teeth to get Courtney to say, yeah, I love this experience. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, it is, so, darling. Like, it's love and marriage Huntsville. You can't be on this type of platform you're married and not show your husband. And Courtney was not like, he was not doing it. You know what I'm saying? It took like along the way. I was like, well, Courtney, I think this is a, you know, I'm going to be filming more, I guess. Like, but I can't do it without you. He could have shut that down in any minute. So it was, if, if that was the case, I would have known, like, it would have been a smooth thing going into it because my husband wouldn't have been on board. He wasn't on board. When you saw um, my interview with Melody, did you feel that um, she made it seem that um, you bef you befriended her to get on the show? Um, I won't say that because she didn't say that. Um, but I feel like there was a lot left up to interpretation. Do you feel like that's been some of the miscommunication between you and her and some of the reasons why um, a lot of the fans may have a, a an opinion about your friendship? I think that's definitely a, a huge possibility, you know? So, yeah, yeah. And I feel, and like I said in the scene, I feel like the people want us to have a problem. And I stated clearly, like, I don't want that because that's not a thing for me. Like, I don't have that type of energy. I don't do those type of things in life. Like, my focus is literally on, like, everything that God put in my spirit to pursue, you know? I don't I don't focus or, like, try to do the extra stuff because I've never had to. Yeah, no, listen, I, I, I will have to agree with you because one thing that we enjoyed about getting you on the show was the fact that you do fit the brand of Love and Marriage Huntsville. You are a self-made, I mean, we, we you, you and I both believe in God, so we like to say God-made, so you're God-made. Um, in addition to that, you are a self-made multi-millionaire. And you, and this is no shade to others, you know, we all get our money from different people. Some get it from an African. Some get <laughs> 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 yes uh not me but <laughs> others get it from hard work and just being being able to focus on their brand you are very inspiring to young girls and to to women all across the world can you explain to us how you a black girl from a small town in Mississippi was able to not only have a multi-million dollar business, but to be able to have that income come in as well. So I ain't gonna lie, like I, everybody, I, I've told my story many times, like I was suicidal in college. I wanted to kill myself. I, I was actually gonna do it. Um, Why? I had spent so many years pursuing something that that I was told I should be doing, you know? I went from high school and went to the military directly from high school, like nine days I'm in basic training. And before I could even get out of basic training, my mom already had my college schedule made, like without even knowing like what my dreams were, what my goals were. And I, I didn't even know. So I automatically got thrust into that path of, this is what you do, like this is what you're supposed to do. And here I am spent all this time. I'm like 27. I got a, I'm like 23 credit hours away from graduating. I got a 3.7 GPA. And I'm like, fuck, I went to school to major in um, arts. I was getting a BFA in art, painting and minoring in photography. I'm like, what am I going to do? Teach? And I didn't want to teach. Like that wasn't in my spirit. And I was just getting depressed about the unknown and how much time I wasted you know, to still not know what I'm going to do. So I was just going to do it. I was like, I'm doing it. I'm, I'm doing it. I was like, I'm, like, I didn't know what I was going to do. And my mind was like, I'm going to take all these pills. I'm not going to fucking wake up tomorrow. And then I told Courtney about it. And he he actually like took me somewhere to like try to go talk it out. I'm about to cry. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> no, it's all. 
Stormy, it's okay. I I I, I had no idea this this was part of your story. And you were 23 at the time. And so I just like, you know, I quit. I told my mom, I'm saying I'm not going to school. I quit. I'm gonna go to hair school and I'm gonna just do what I enjoy doing. And that ended up having me in Huntsville. And I came to Huntsville like eight hundred dollars. I had no plan and I figured it out. At every point of my journey, I just figure it out. Like I say, you know. God, whatever you want me to do, that's what I'm going to do. Like, I cannot know what the landscape is going to look like. I cannot have what I feel like I need. I can be literally running on E and I'll still go forward because like in my spirit, if I'm in flow, whatever's supposed to come to me will come. And that's kind of been the story of my life. So I don't have this magical like group plan. I don't have this magical like thing to say I did X, Y, and Z and I knew I was going to be successful. I just didn't give up and I became successful. And that's, and that's it in a nutshell. But let me say this to you. I believe tears are a beautiful representation of God speaking to you and your heart um, being the, the voice of his blessing for you. I, I, I don't believe tears should be something you should be ashamed of. I cry. And it also shows, Stormy, that you... This is what I do know about you that I don't think a lot of people know. They will later on this season. Um, we're just getting started. But I know that you are very sensitive. <laughs> you are. You're I very... cry like the whole season. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's okay. But th this this is what I love about you. You are. It's okay to be vulnerable. It's relatable. That's why I. Listen. There's a lot of rich women and, and couples who want to be on Love and Marriage Huntsville. And I'd be like, no, because I know that they, they don't have the 